Hello, people of the internet. My name is JD Shadow. Let's go ahead and talk about the channel awesome change the channel thing yet again because there is actually, believe it or not, a new development. I do believe in this situation. And I do believe that everybody needs to become aware of this because not only does it highlight a new development as in somebody who was part of the site that has spoken out recently, not only that, and I do believe we can confirm that he is who he says he is, not only that, but it does highlight something of a problem with the Channel Awesome subreddit in recent months as a direct result of the change to channel drama. In case you are not aware, I posted four videos about this. One of them is an hour and 30 minutes long. So if anyone wants to know anything about what is going on in Channel Awesome and this change the channel thing, and this Google document, the not so awesome document, go watch those videos before you watch this one because we're gonna go right into something that the subreddit user of Rusty Cheese Knife had posted. Now, the thing he created was what the EGAD, and I don't know if you know anything about him, but he is the one that did the Digimon series. He, he was a big part of the Digimon fandom, and he had returned to his Digimon in retrospect series just recently. But one thing he did post was to the Channel Awesome subreddit. Now, a little bit of background into how the subreddit is acting recently. These are the ones that are championing the notion of going into every single Channel Awesome video that Doug and company have posted recently in the wake of the change the channel thing. And they have repeatedly spammed the boards Spam the YouTube comments with the reminder that, hey, they got to answer or they have the answer to this. They have the answer to that. Hey, they haven't really posted an actual apology that we approve of. And they're now complaining that Channel Awesome is now deleting those types of comments, which they haven't before. But yeah, keep in mind that when someone keeps badgering you and pestering you about that and never letting you forget or God forbid we forgive some people for some things. Yeah, they're going to take action. They're not going to just go let you do that. And why would they? I don't understand why that is okay. That is an okay thing for people to do. I don't understand that at all. But we're going to go into what they did to this guy. And let's be quite honest. This is not the first time that this subreddit has acted this way. And not only that, this is not the first time I've seen a content creator who has gone against the grain being attacked as they have been. But let's get to what he has said. He said in quote, Hello all, my name is Sam. Around 2010, I started a video series on the That Guy With The Glasses site under the name What The EGAT, Doug and company were in their prime during this time, and the whole content creation scene was far, far different compared to what it is nowadays. I stepped out of the content creation scene around 2012 for personal reasons, but from what I recall, everyone was getting along. Sure, there were disagreements to be sure, but for the most part, what I perceived was an atmosphere where everyone was willing to get along in spite of any disagreements. I've come back to content creation as of this year, and have returned to a scene that I do not understand and can only attribute to capriciousness. Doug Walker started something that a lot of people throughout social media hitched their wagons to. I got somewhat popular during my brief stint when I put a few videos on Blood TV back when that was the thing and was graciously allowed to post my content on the TGWTG website. Without Doug, I would never have received the amount of views I got, nor would my content have had the degree of visibility that Going to Channel Awesome provided me. I'll be clear about this. I owed a lot to Doug Walker. I don't know him personally, I never met him, and to be honest, I wouldn't really think much of it if I did or not. However, if I did meet him, I knew I'd have to thank him, because he's the one mainly responsible for what got so many others started. On that note, I suppose I should also be thankful to Noah Antweiler because he was right there with Doug Walker when they were producing content. But Sam, you say, what about all the drama? What does that have to do with me? Or you? Or anyone except those personally involved with it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's someone else's dirty laundry. I have my own to deal with, same as everyone else. Moreover, I'm surprised at the amount of people who brought into the drama considering how one-sided it was. 
In any situation where you're at the tail end of accusations, you know damn well you'd want your side of the story told before anyone came to any judgments. So shame on anyone who came to any conclusions based on what amounts to pure bitterness on the part of anyone involved in running that Google Doc. Those people owe a huge portion of their livelihoods to Doug and Channel Awesome in spite of how professional they thought he was. As for professionalism, these people signed on with a guy who quit his last job by aching I quit on his chest and filming himself in front of his former employees. These people chose to climb aboard the crazy train, warts and all, and they have the audacity to complain about the lack of professionalism. I suppose it's ironic that Doug and by extension CA had the same thing happen to them, but I can't say they really deserve it. Moreover, let's say Doug and Channel Awesome were unprofessional, did things wrong, etc. Yeah, that happens in any business. People can be stupid, unprofessional, ugly, etc. So what? They don't owe it any less to Doug for the fact that he hosted them, put them in the spotlight. There's so many people I'm aware of on social media right now that I would never have been had it not been for Doug Walker, and that includes everyone who had something to say about him and that Dooku dog. Think about that and drink any irony. Moreover, if Doug or anyone in Channel Awesome was involved in anything criminal, then why wouldn't these people contact the proper authorities? The only reason I can fathom there hasn't been any word on it is that because nothing criminal actually happened, else the people involved would have to testify to it in some kind of legal setting. No, instead, they decide to crucify Doug and CA on the cross of public opinion and shame on them for doing so. It's childish and capitalist these people owe so much to Doug. The only person I have any respect for in all of this is Phelan Portis as I've noticed he made no contributions to the Google Doc. Good on him for that. Phelan was and remains one of the most humble content creators on social media and when he departed CA and that guy with the glasses, he did so gracefully. All this in spite of the circumstances under which he was let go. These people all need to grow up. Every last one of them. Hell, I'll even love to see a crowd in there as well. What did they think they had to prove by responding to this shit? In conclusion, I'll simply reiterate that there's a lot of people who owe Doug a debt of gratitude that they simply cannot repay. Like it or not, hate him or not, these people owe their subscribers, their views, their patrons, etc. All to Doug Walker and Channel Awesome. And they want to crucify him for it? Fuck that. So let's review what he has said and we'll go into reactions and then we'll go into what the response from the subreddit was. And this is going to be kind of interesting when you put this into perspective. So basically he was not really quote unquote employed with Channel Awesome and he wasn't in the main clicks that Channel Awesome had. However, that being said, he's not really as concerned with the monetary gains that these people had gotten as it was the exposure they've had. And I do believe that that's where he is saying that people should be more thankful that he got them to where they are now. That they would not be where they are now if Channel Awesome didn't give them that exposure. Regardless of what the final reaction or the final interaction they had with them was whether or not it was let go for more personal reasons or just they wanted to move on from the site. It is the exposure that was the most important and they're still getting what they would have gotten had they stayed with Channel Awesome one way or the other which is the exposure of the Patreon money and so on and so forth. Now the one thing that I would caution about is that the main problems, the ones that people keep focusing on on are the ones that also go into the Me Too movement going on with the sexual harassment and the sexual misconduct situations with you Wario. And yes, we'll get to those, but we have to be careful there because that is the things that many people continue to focus on. And if you would notice the people who were taking the content creator side on this as opposed to you know, awesome apologies it would be or the explanations it would be are only going on what the female contributors have been saying and not the male contributors as if they're using the females as shields in order to not have to answer to any of the counter arguments that Channel Awesome has had. They're using Lindsay Ellis, they're using Holly Brown, they're using Lupa 
as a means in order to not have to answer to any of the arguments against their claims that have been brought up. They don't want to have to answer to the notion Chaz Apocalypse was a clique that was in an essence hard to deal with, hard to work around, hard to work with because of the social politics that they kept bringing into every single little thing that they had done according to Count Jacula, which he had also gotten attacked as soon as he said something that was against the grain from what people approved was the story that they wanted people to go with. Lindsay Ellis even had said that Channel Awesome only went after the claims that were made by the females when it was the females that were being shown by those people who just popped out of nowhere on YouTube in order to automatically take the side of the content contributors even before the Google document even came out. They knew exactly what they wanted to believe, they knew exactly what was going to be said apparently, and they were never going to accept an apology for Channel Awesome even if they uh, apologized for every single little thing, regardless of whether or not they should apologize for every single little thing. Remember, if you don't think you've done what you're being accused of, why apologize to that? And I do believe that full heartedly, full cloth, you don't apologize for something you you never did and I don't know why that's so hard for people to understand I don't know why it's so hard for people who are blindly taking the creators side to understand but for some reason they just want Channel Awesome to blindly apologize for something that they completely believe they are not guilty of why apologize for something why admit to guilt to something when you are not guilty when you do believe foolhardily that you are innocent of those accusations. Prove you are innocent because what if you are innocent? What if they are innocent? What if they're right? And moreover, why is it that you are using these females, why are you using those contributors as shields, as blockades, in order to protect you from having to answer to any of the counter arguments? Why are you using that as an excuse to say, hey, we don't have to answer to that, we just want them to apologize. But why haven't you answered to any of the Channel Awesome rebuttals? Why have you not answered to any of those things that they have said? All you did have said, yeah, but we're still right. You haven't actually disputed any of those claims. You haven't disputed any of those things. You just reiterated what you've already said. How is that a thing that we can go on? We have to use our brains here. We have to use our heads here. That is not using your heads. That's not using your brains. That is just going on, okay, they said it so they must be true, or this person said it or that person said it so it must be true. And that's not how things work. That's not how this whole thing works. And they don't realize how misogynistic or sexist they actually are by doing that. They don't realize how they're playing into that same boat that they're accusing everybody else of doing. That is not automatically taking the content creator's side. That is not just all going, oh, you should have apologized to this. No, they're moving on with their lives because they didn't automatically believe everything that they were saying. They understood that Lindsay Ellis was not exactly playing with clean hands. No, they did not think that Holly Brown or Looper were playing with clean hands. Yes, they do believe some of the quote-unquote conspiracy theories that Dan Olsen was involved in. They do believe that he had something to do about the CP that he had supposedly on his computer. They do believe some of that was true, if not all of it. Yes, they have seen the crash override logs. Yes, they have seen that he's friends with a certain person that is very questionable in the form of what she has done in recent years. And yes, they do remember all that. And yes, they do believe that they are not being completely truthful. And no, you cannot just willy-nilly throw accusations of sexual harassment around because that is a serious claim. If you are not guilty of it, if you are innocent, you better damn well answer that right now. You have to go about that right that very second if someone is accusing you of that. As soon as you know about it, you have to answer to that. Because wow, how blindly believable those have become in recent years, in recent times. You got to get on the ball about that. 
because look what's happening to Morgan Freeman. He is trying to fight for his very career, his very livelihood right in the moment because CNN did what they did and they are not backing off of it. And I do believe that a lawsuit is coming on that front and neither of them are backing down from that. So that's going to be a big fight coming down the road. And if you don't think for one second that the future of Me Too is going to ride in the hands of that whole thing, then you are sadly mistaken. That has a lot of implications of that goes down the way that it seems to be going down. So yeah, you have to be extremely careful. The things about Drew Wario, there are a lot of questions that still need to be answered about all of that. But enough about that, let's get to why this particular subreddit, this channel awesome subreddit has become quite questionable. Because I answered to this person, I sent a message to him discussing how I had done these videos and how some other content creators who were not the chosen that I have pointed out in a previous video are getting attacked. They're being Count Jack Lair and Mackay Curtis right now because hey, they're not agreeing blindly with Lindsay Ellis or any of those other people. So how dare they not agree with the chosen ones? We're going to attack them. And yes, I've been attacked. Have you seen the like this? like ratio of the videos I posted about this it has to be because I didn't agree fully with them it has to be nothing else they're not actually listening to what I'm actually saying they're just blindly hitting that dislike tag you know they're doing it because they're doing it to Count Jack Lair. they're doing it to Mikai Curtis and they're doing it to this guy because he answered me later on in the day saying it's not so much of a story per se I went under the name what the ecat and posted videos on that guy with the glasses around 2009 to 2010. I got caught up in some real life stuff that took me away from that whole scene but when I left it it seemed to me that everyone there was cool with each other. I don't know Doug or anyone who worked with CA personally. The only person that I had any kind of contact with and that was indirectly was Hope Chapman aka Jess Otaku as she and I were doing reviews on the animated television show Digimon Avengers 2. Here's the thing, I was just anonymous plebe who posted my shit on that guy with the glasses and I developed a bit of popularity for it. I don't know how long it, I would have been able to sustain that. But the fact of the matter is, if it hadn't been for the website, I would have never been able to achieve that. Regardless of the kinds of people who run CA, I cannot deny that I owe them for that. In regards to people like Louis Louv Hogg, Hope Chapman, Kaylin Dickerson, Allison Prager, Lizzie Ellis, and everyone else, how much more do they owe the number of subscribers, viewers, donator, etc. to the fact that they were put into the spotlight because the NC was popular first? It just doesn't seem right to me that they do all this character assassination when the reality is they hardly anyone would know who they were if it not for Doug or CA. That is kind of true actually. I do want to stop right there because I do believe that is kind of true. When you're with somebody who has a lot of exposure and then you're just starting out, the chances are you're going to try to play a little bit on the hopes that their exposure will rub off on you, that they will get you that exposure that you want and then you can bounce off of that. But instead of at the very least appreciating that they got you started, you then try to say, oh, well, they were practicing bad business practices, which a lot of people do, but there's some questions as to whether or not what you're saying is what actually happened. There are conflicting reports. There are conflicting stories. There is a conflicting version there that you have to answer to, and I don't believe that anyone has actually done that, and that just went back to the, oh, but the women were the ones who said it. How dare you attack the women? The women were the ones who brought up the sexual allegations and the harassment claims. Those are the most serious claims you can possibly level on somebody right now. Why wouldn't they focus mainly on them? Those are the more damning claims. 
Yes, there were other things that they probably should address, but those were the more egregious ones. Those were the ones that will burn any person, any place of business, any human being. You gotta answer to those things. That is hiding behind your social status. That is using your social status as a shield to keep yourself from having to answer to any criticism about what you have done. That is not an excuse. That is not a reason to not answer to the counterclaims. If you don't have anything to hide, then why just answer to those claims? If Danielson didn't do anything illegal or immoral, then see what really happened that day. Because quite frankly, you were being told about it by my Picard, so say something about that. Bring that up. Say what really happened. Stop blaming everybody else for things that actually happened. Stop hiding behind something that people get scared to combat you against when they see it being brought up because they're scared of being put on a block list by somebody that has nothing else to do with their lives. Stop hiding behind that. Stop hiding behind those things that happened a long time ago that you have never gotten over because you don't know what you're talking about when you talk about those things. But let's get to the rest of this message that he sent to me because this is where it gets to the subreddit in particular. He goes on to say, quote, I'm a bit confused as to why I had my thread locked and then get banned from the ZA channel when I was actually defending those very people. And mind you, I'm not defending any of the actions they've been accused of because my main point was that all they've been accused of is based on hearsay evidence. The point is, nobody has proven anything and nobody has taken any of this to a higher authority to sort out. Moreover, there's still so much we do not know. Yet how many people have jumped to conclusions based on gossip and scant evidence? What it looks like to me is that Doug and CA have are being crucified on the alter a popular opinion is mob rule and what business is that of anyone except those personally involved anyway i have a lot more i'd like to say but this reply would get kind of long do you have any means by which we could set up a voice chat and yes i do want to do that at a later date i will inform people of what i am planning on doing but he then sent another message to me saying quote by the way when they banned me this was the message they left and it goes to say, quote, Your post's only purpose seems to be to stir drama and antagonize victims of abuse. Your ban will not be reconsidered. Basically put, they banned them for speaking out against the grain of the opinions that were on that subreddit. And all you have to do is go to that subreddit and look and see how much people get downvoted because they are not automatically taking the content creator side or simply posting a Doug Walker video anymore. Yes, it has become an echo chamber, and he goes on to say, quote, no dissenting views allowed. They've basically decided who is and who isn't a victim here, all based on hearsay. Now, the one thing I could say is that Count Jackula did corroborate one of those victims of the Jew Wario case. However, this goes into another problem that I have had here lately. Yes, I've gotten attacked recently. Yes, Count Jackula has been attacked recently. I don't know if Mikai Curtis has been attacked attacked personally but I can safely assume that he has probably gotten a few messages aimed at him as well. The problem is, is that it is not safe to not take the side of the content creators because of the mob mentality right now. It is more of the social politics going on and the sensitivities that people have taken advantage of in order to get away with certain things. Now, I'm not saying that everybody does that, but there are people that will make it harder for those people who are actual victims of harassment, bullying, or assault in order to have their case be believed because there's also those people that will take firm advantage of that sentiment in order to use it to silence critics of their work. And I do believe that Lindsay and Holly and Lupa have become those people who have taken disgusting advantage of these situations right now. 
and that mob mentality has attacked Count Jack. They've attacked Mikai Curtis. They have attacked this guy. And I don't think that is correct. I don't think that's right. And those people who are going to downvote my video right now, you know it's going to happen, and blindly attack me for quote unquote blaming victims when that is not what's going on right now. We are questioning whether or not Lindsay, Holly, or Lupa were victims to begin with or whether or not they instigated and then complained when they got the receipt for their instigating, believing that they were not to be questioned, they were not to be messed with. And whether or not the people involved in the document, most of the people involved in the document, were using the victims of the Juwario situation in order to further their own political agenda. Whether or not they were actually using the victims as shields here. And shame on them for doing something like that. Now, I will no doubt get back in touch with what the EGAD. I plan on following up on this. And yes, this means there is going to be be more talk about the change the channel situation on this channel because yes this is a big scoop and yes this is something that I do believe needs to be addressed and shame on those people for blindly downloading these types of videos listen to what we are saying read what is being said there's a reason why Malcolm and Tamara are saying read the document kiss I don't think that anybody's doing that and there's a lot of rage I want to do right now to those people who or attacking them as well. Shame on them. Shame on them for doing that. There's a lot of things I can say, but that would get my account deleted. There's a lot of things I can call them, but that would get my account deleted off of YouTube. There's a bunch of things that I could say to their face. They're abhorrent human beings for doing that. But again, that would get my account deleted on YouTube, so I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to keep myself as civil as possible here. But anyway, thank you for listening. If you want to to tell me your thoughts about what you just heard hit that comment down below and subscribe for more geek gaming culture be sure to hit that bell for notification of when i do post new stuff i do things sporadically i don't have a set schedule so please be advised of that i do things when i feel as though i'm ready to do them so yeah, whenever I do post a new video, be sure to keep in touch. Until next time, my name is Shitty Shadow. That just happened.